part of generative AI is that, look, it can take a massive amount of information and help you find the answer you're looking for very easily, very quickly, very succinctly. I mean, as it, it will enable non-technical users to do advanced searches, queries, and really right. find just that nugget that they're looking for. And it's the first tool that I've ever seen that really permeates business and technology at the same time. Yeah, you know, we've had technology innovations, we've had new technology, uh, cloud or phones or databases or whatever, but this one really changes both the way we fundamentally work and how we deliver it. AI can work across lawyers, customer service, industry SMEs, developers. I mean, every single role in an organization mm -hmm. can be impacted by this. And it's just truly amazing. But look, there's downsides. Financial too. services, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, especially in financial services. Yeah, absolutely. But look, there's a downside too. While it lowers the barriers of entry for employees to use mm. these things and consume it, it lowers it also for people trying to do malicious activity on that's our right, systems. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. It will be easier for people to write malware. Exactly. Will, you know, phishing emails will be far more accurate, right? You know, we used to train people, if you see a lot of typos in, a, in an email, probably phishing, just ignore it. That's right. Now we're going to have to look at new ways of detecting whether this is mm -hmm. phishing or not, because the emails will be that much better. Uh, fraudsters will develop tools to do with decryption easier, mm. et cetera. That's right. right. So there's really yep. a lot of things here. Another risk that we have, in, especially in financial services, is that you don't know whether the system is telling you something truthful or whether mm. it's what's called hallucinating or just oh, inventing that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. some facts, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's really important. You know, I, if I need to trust it, our whole system as financial services is built on trust, right? We trust that banks or financial institutions are going to trade funds or mm. be there on the contra side of a trade. Our customers give us monies, assuming that they can take that money out. Or we're going to do the right things on their behalf with that money. So it's this whole system. We've spent hundreds of years building trust into financial services. Mm. If we can't trust this underlying tool, we can't have that erode the potential trust of the That's overall right, yeah. system, right? So we have to be really careful about where we use these things. There was a lot of discussions about um, how some of these uh, automated, say, for example, loan approval systems is going to work using AI technologies, right? How are you going to ensure that the data that you use to train these uh, models are unbiased, right? I mean, that's the classic example I've been talking about for years with traditional AI is mm. loan decisions, right? You don't even, that's just simple, I'll use a fancy term here, neural network that can do that. But in the interest of time, we will have to jump to the next innovation, which you also talked about in the APEC summit as well when you were in Singapore, which is yeah. uh, quantum technologies, right? Oh, wow. So yeah. I think, yeah, so that's another big one. And a lot of people are saying, wow, okay, it's just going to break our, you know, encryption systems that's underpinning our digital infrastructure. And then some say, oh, wow, you need, uh, what, millions and billions of qubits. That's not going to happen for ages. And then some say, right, okay, why not we harvest now and decrypt later, right? Gather all the information and then wait until we have the technology and just um, break everything and release all the secrets. Um, so what, what is the uh, current status? <laughs> so when it comes to uh, financial services, what is the current status right now when it comes to the quantum technology? Like I said, quantum com uh, cryptography today is built on the size of that uh, key legs. Mm -hmm. And there's differently, there's 128 bit, 256 bit, et cetera. What our recommendations are to people is if you were to find out 128 bit encryption was broken, would you even know what applications are running that today? Exactly. That's right. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Start, start doing that inventory today, mm. right? And start bringing those up to 256 bits. Right. You immediately push the clock that much further on when we have to worry that's about right, quantum right. photography yeah. and by the time. 